Hey, hey. Hey. Yeah? All right. Yep. We got it. Hey, buddy. Hey what's, hey, what's up? And welcome to Freestyle Lives on Stereo with Latif and Angel, a new platform where we come together to discuss various topics regarding the freestyle music scene, where it's been, where it's at, and most important, where it's going. But we can't do it without you, the freestyle community. We encourage you to join in the discussion. Ask questions. Share with us your ideas and opinions. Because together we believe that we can define this culture as it was meant to be. And not only enjoy it, but also benefit from the many opportunities it has to offer. If you're not already following us, please do so now. So that, we, that, so that you will never miss an episode. And today's topic is the freestyle music DJ. Do we still need them? Do we still need these people? What do you think? Absolutely. You still think we need them? Most DJs, <clears throat> most DJs are enthusiastic about the music they play. So if they're freestyle DJs, they're enthusiastic about the music they play. So they're in turn, <clears throat> they're enthusiastic about the artists and they're enthusiastic about the fans. So we absolutely need them. Okay, that's a good, good. Let me ask you, let's, let's rewind. What was the first time you was exposed to the DJ where you saw what they did and you were like, what the hell? What, 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 what the hell? What, what are they doing? What was the first time you um, experienced that? I was actually um, in the studio. I was about 15 really? years old, I was in the studio doing backgrounds. Okay. I was in the studio, 15 years old, and I met a DJ there that, that was working on the song. And he uh -huh. told me he DJed, and it was like, wow, that's so freaking cool. And uh, you had never even heard of a Stay DJ friends, before And that? you know what? We're still, friends. We're still friends to this day. He's on my Facebook. Oh, okay. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. I the know. <laughs> time, Isn't that crazy? The, the, yeah. Yeah. It's weird that it, it would take you to go all the way to the studio before you were exposed to a DJ. I mean, the first, I met the, huh? you know what? I met DJs in 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 the you know in the streets, you know, in the jams. Right. But I'm talking right. about a professional DJ that was working in club. Oh, and, professional. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know what yeah, type no. you meant. Yeah, I mean, I mean, when you first realized what the hell, what the hell is this person doing? Yeah, because oh, that was, was in the jam. this, Definitely the yeah, jams. Definitely jams in the project. Yeah. Yeah, I must have been about 11 years old. Yeah. And okay. they would have the jams. <clears throat> they would have them okay. right across the street from my house in the, in the schoolyard. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's so funny because I was younger when I was exposed, but I didn't pay it no mind. Like, I really didn't know what it, what they were because I remember them at parties. But right. I didn't pay them no mind. I had just some person playing the music. But when I realized what a DJ was and that it was there's an art, some sort of art behind, behind it. Yeah, it was at the, it was at the jams. And it right. was so crazy because I had already moved out of the Bronx and I had moved back to, I had moved to Queens, but you know, right. my heart was still the Bronx and all my friends were still in the Bronx. So I never hung out and I was young and I never hung out there. I used to tell my mother, can I go back to the Bronx? And she allowed me to ride. I remember I was, I was a little older. Uh, she allowed me to start riding the trains and I would go to Bobby's house over at University Projects. And I always stayed there like every weekend. I walked in his house like every Friday. <laughs> Like clockwork. You know? Yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. It was like, hey, I'm home. You know, it was like I was gone for the week. You know, yeah. yeah. But it was, you know, that was like my second home. And his mother was like my mom, and my mother and his mother were best friends. But I remember one Saturday morning. It was a summer, and we used to see what it was project. So we saw with the windows open, and he lived on the God. He lived way up. I forgot how big those buildings were. I don't know if he lived on the tenth floor. Those are the twelve buildings. Yeah, they were real tall, so I don't remember. I remember he was way up there, because he was far up. And I remember we were there, and I'm laying in the bed, and we had the TV on, and we woke up. It was real early in the morning, and I'm hearing this music just echoing. And I'm not really paying it any mind, because I'm thinking maybe it's a car. And I go over to the window, and I can see down into the little basketball courts. That the little basketball court right there, part of the projects. So I, mm -hmm. I look down, and I see a freaking... I see music and I see them, they, they're bringing some more other stuff in and they got like a dolly and they're bringing some records and I'm like, and but they're yeah. ready, but they weren't playing the music. They were like testing it. Like I missed the whole process of them setting up. 
<clears throat> and they were already like testing, making sure everything, and they were checking with the mic. I was like, and when I went there, I said, what the hell are they doing? He goes, oh, they're about to do a jam. They do them, they, they do them on, on the summer. So I don't know how I missed any other ones. And right. um, so I went down, so I had went down there. I said, man, let's go down, let's go down. So we went down there and people already started packing, started getting in there. And it was early in the morning, man. Like I was like, well, by that time it was about 11, almost noon. And I'm watching- Damn, that was an early at, jam. Yeah, it was early. It was I remember it was all. That was like daytime. a lunchtime jam and shit. Yeah, no, that, no, but it ran all day, <clears> all day, like till it got dark. Like they played all day long, and um, and where it was, where it was positioned was crazy because you heard it everywhere. And I remember right. going down there, and I remember I was fascinated because I was like, "Yo, where are they getting the electricity?" And that's when I saw the freaking long cable, and they had opened up the yeah. bottom part of the lampposts, and yeah, they had that shit yeah. rigged. I said, "I said, oh, I said, is that even legal?" Like nobody bothered <laughs> them. You're so funny. No, people, Is that even people, legal? There was people. Like, how old do you some... think about if that was legal? Because I didn't give a shit if it was legal or not. No, because it just looked like it was like, <laughs> yeah, no, it was weird. I remember it, I was fascinated because I wanted to know where the hell the electricity was coming from. I was like, wow, That's did you do funny. that? Yeah. And then, and then, yeah. um, <laughs> and then I remember seeing like women, like mothers were coming down and they were setting up like little stands. They were bringing down their folding tables. And they were selling yeah. shit like cookies and they were, you know, like people, yo, it would turn into a business. You know, right. and that's the first time I stood there and I watched them and I started seeing what they were doing. Yeah. And it and it and it fascinated me. It fascinated me. You know? I'm sure. But yeah, but I never really really thought it was gonna be anything. I never looked at it to be anything big. You know, I didn't at that part of my life, I didn't know where it was gonna where it was gonna go. You know, I thought it was huge. I mean, I used to go to the ones in my projects. I lived in Monroe projects. I used to go to the one in Bronxdale projects. I used to go in the one in Bronx River projects. <coughs> so I basically used to go to like all the projects in my area. I yeah, don't yeah. think I ever went to one in Castle Hill projects. I don't remember if I went to one there. Mm, okay. But definitely okay. in Monroe, Bronxdale and Bronx River. And you know, yeah, Bronx River was very well known for, for the yeah. jams. You know, yeah, every yeah, was, every big DJ was there. When I was in Soundview, they had them, but I didn't know anyone in that area. So I didn't oh yeah, yeah, Soundview. I used to go to Soundview. Yeah. My cousins lived in Soundview. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah I used to do like, Soundview a lot. Yeah. But I yeah. didn't know people like in that neighborhood. That wasn't my hood. I was just stay there. But so I didn't really, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really meet anybody there. That was during my boxing days. You know, I grew but, um, up. They, I grew up with a lot of people in that in that um in that project. Almost almost as much as I knew my own projects in that projects. I knew. And that's, and that's, and then like, it wasn't far after that. Like, it seemed like it was, might have been like the following. Wait a minute, year. isn't that crazy that you used to what? be in those projects as a teenager and I used to be in those projects as a teenager and we didn't know each other? Nah, yeah, but oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah. We've but, always know, had, a, like, huh? Yeah, but it was, it was weird because when I lived in Queens, I hung out in the Bronx. But then when I moved to the back to the Bronx, I went to school in Queens. That's crazy. Yeah, because I, I, I got so crazy. used to being in. Yeah. We've always been we've we've always been passing each other in our lives. You yeah, know? know? Yeah. We lived yeah. a we lived a block away as babies. We got baptized a block away from each other as babies. That's crazy. That's crazy. So that so is let me freaky. let me So let me ask you, because you know, now now we know the DJs at that time. But keep in mind, these DJs went way back. They went back. Remember Wolfman Jack? Yeah, you know, yeah. We look at we looked at them as radio personalities and Casey Kasem and Carlos de uh, Jesus. Yeah. So we look well with Carlos de Jesus, and we start going to the disco age. Then I start understanding. But we're going back a little further back, like you're talking you about know, the CBS it, radio. Right, right. You know, and those dudes yeah. were DJs. Those dudes were yeah. DJs, and that they became celebrities like that. You know, they became, they became huge. You know, mm -hmm. but um, but um, when when and then then when the rap thing came in, when the whole rap thing came in, I remember because I was in Queens, and it was so funny because I was in the Bronx hanging out, and I was coming back to Queens and sharing this information with my friends. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, my friend Rudy Munoz, the one you see him, he's a Marine, he's on a. On Facebook, sometimes he follows me, and um, he lives in Hawaii. You see him doing a lot of hiking. Yes, and yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I know so you're me talking. And him, yeah, so me and him, 
we did, we were rappers. And I remember because we used to, we used to hang out upstairs because he lived like on the fourth floor and our friend Jerry lived up on the sixth floor. And Jerry had, we took, Jerry had two old stereos and we actually put the two stereos together. And we, and I started teaching them how to go back and forth. Rudy right now, DJs, like that's his thing. Like he, that's his, it's a side hustle for him, but you know, I don't think he does it for money, but it does it as a hobby. But we started messing with the stereo. We started learning how to, because we were rapping and we needed a way of taking like rock, skate, roll, bounce. We needed to, a way of yeah. keeping that looped. We had to keep it looped, you know? Right. And we learned to go from one speaker to the next. And, it was, and right. using just the, the volume, we didn't have a, a mixer or nothing. Yeah. So there was a time I got really into it. And then my friend Olivio was a DJ. And that's when I started that. During that time was when like Madonna, Borderline, that's, that's when I started learning yeah. how to DJ that stuff. And I was actually good. But I was always wanted to be a rapper, so the DJ thing never really, it never really moved me. But like all my friends were like, everybody I knew, my father was Swan. That's how I know Swan. Swan was the DJ, you know? Um, Isn't that yeah. crazy about Swan? We both yeah. knew Swan growing up and didn't That's know each crazy. other. That's crazy. And I was close to Swan. Like that was my boy. That wasn't like some And he guy was I close knew. to I my was... brothers. Yeah, and he lived in my building. And he was close to my brothers. That's that so is crazy. crazy. And you know what yeah. else is crazy? I used to be at those mm -hmm. jams, you used to be at those jams, but I used to rap at those jams. Yeah, me too. Me too. So that's crazy that we, oh, come on. Yeah. Two yeah. Puerto Ricans you know rapping so at a jam? I'm, that's yeah, you know crazy so, how we never met each other. Yeah, and it's so funny because I used to go, I used to crouch down behind the speakers because I was shy. And I used to, and I used to, all I used to know how to say, a to the beat, y'all, a yes, yes, y'all, a yes, yes, y'all, a to oh, the beat, that's why my, that's why my, that's why my books. On and on and on and on and on and the beat, don't stop until the break of dawn. <laughs> oh, don't, don't get me started. We're going to do, don't we're going to do a podcast. Don't get me started. We're going yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna to do all our old, all our old school rap. Yeah, I'm going to pull out, I'll do a whole hour. That's my other the girl that can never be denied. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but, but 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 then then you know but like you know so and then when we were when i was rapping i was doing a lot of these proms i started doing proms but yeah. i i was i was really fascinated by um the raps the, the ones that were censored the ones that cursed and there wasn't that many and a lot of the raps i was right actually already had curses or they were subliminally cursed and and yeah. i used to do them i used to do them in the schools and i literally got escorted out of the school and like it was a, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I literally got escorted. Remember that DJ Drac, the guy Drac on my face. So yeah, so Drac was the DJ, and uh, and I used to I used to rap, but I knew Drac but, too. Remember? Yeah, yeah, so crazy. That's but crazy. Then, um, but then, um, uh, uh, at one point now, okay, so now we're gonna speed up a little bit because now DJs actually became important. You started to really see the importance when you started to release music, right? Well, not only that, the DJs were my freaking age, basically. We came from the same right. neighborhood. There was Little right. Louie, there was Goongi, there was right. Andy, you know what I'm saying? Like, they were all right. DJ. Right. There but was Wayne. Under... Wayne was older, but, you know, Wayne came yeah. from the neighborhood, you know? So right, right. there was a lot of people that I grew up with that were DJs at that point. Right. But did you realize at that point, like you're putting out records, you know, of course you want a video out, you want radio play, you want, but did you know, did you realize, think, think, think deep in the beginning. Now, eventually you did, but when you first started, did you realize how important these DJs were to break your records? Oh, absolutely. I knew that. Remember. You caught on, I, you caught on right away. Because I had met the DJ when I was 15. And he was a part right. of that whole scene. He was a part of that whole Eddie Rivera scene. And, you know, right. and they would break practice. And yeah, I was I was very well aware of that. Okay. Very well. Okay. That's how I knew. That's how I knew about Show Me through the DJs. Oh, I got you. Because it was a demo okay. of Show Me. So I had oh, so already were, heard it. Oh, wait. So what they were they were already playing the demo? Um, I knew the DJs. So they had the demo. So I oh, heard it through the DJ. Do you get what I'm saying? <coughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. already okay. when you want when they wanted me to do be in the group and I knew that was the song, I was like, all right, that's a fucking hit. Show me it was a hit. I knew it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, it was different. Right, right. It was catchy. Right. It was now girl what was power. what what did you think? Yeah? 
what what did you think the DJs did that was different than like what a radio station could do? So you reckon we always wanted to get well, I mean, stations. We could we couldn't just walk into the radio station, but you could just walk up to a DJ in a club. You could just walk up to a DJ in a jam. You could just walk up to a DJ in a party. You could just walk right. up to the DJs at Eddie Rivera's. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Did they have you? Did they ever have you go personally with your own records and go bring them to the DJs? You want to know something so? You want to know something so funny? We, I never did that for my own records, but right. when when David and Robert, CSC Music Factory, put together Seduction, I actually okay. took Seduction's record around with me. Oh wow! And gave it to that. DJs to play. Yeah, because that's And I remember people telling me. People telling me, why are you doing that for a girl group? I was like, I don't yeah. know. Those are my friends. And, you know, I like the song. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it was yeah, never yeah. a big deal to me. I always felt like we were all so different, like the girl groups. You can, yeah. I don't care what anybody says. Everybody says, oh, well, you know, you, some of you girls dress similar. It didn't matter. We were yeah. all, if you, if you ever, well, you've met all the girl yeah. groups, you know. Yeah. None mm -hmm. of us. No. No. Did I lose you? All right. For some reason, uh, Angel got cut. We don't know what's going on. Let's see if she can get back on. Ah. Are you there? What happened? Yeah. I don't know. I was talking to you. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Mark, watch out. You're not pressing buttons. Be careful. I'm not pressing anything. All right. All right. Why? why <laughs> well, hold up. Well, hold up. Why do I always well, have to get the blame? It because can't it be technology. It's me it pressing something. Because it said reconnecting angel. That's why. So maybe it was you. Me. Maybe it was you no, that was did your, something. No, it was your fault. But with some big ass thumbs of yours. Man, no, no, no. Nah, maybe man. you pressed. How many times do you go to use your phone and them big ass fingers and thumbs start typing craziness <laughs> and hitting all kinds of buttons? <laughs> 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 but I right, hit so, something. So let me, all right. So let me, um, <clears throat> so yeah, well, I know that about you. I know. I see. That's one of the, one of the things that really you know moved me towards you is that I I, un I understand. I understood. I saw that non selfishness about you, and you know I'm the same way. So well, of you course, know, it's kind of, I can't even say I it's really non selfishness. I'm gonna tell you something right now. I can't even say it's non selfishness because I'm doing it for the freestyle genre. Ultimately, no. Well, I'm but doing it. Doesn't it matter. I'm doing it till the freestyle genre keeps going because right. that's what I love and that's how I keep right. working. No, no, I'm and... talking about. I'm talking about back in the days when you were, you know, moving around the seduction. You know, I mean, here you are in a group trying to blow up your group. Oh uh, yeah. Who does that? Let's be real. Who does that? Nobody does that. And that's you know what? I really, really, really liked the girls. I liked Michelle. Right. I liked April. I liked Sonoa. Well, you're, you're that. that I you're thought that they were great person. together. Yeah, that's why when people talk otherwise, and if, if, like I've heard, if I've heard rumors and shit, I'm like, well, y'all, y'all definitely don't know her, because that's not her. I've seen you listen as an agent, okay? Let's say as an agent and even as your husband, okay? All right, my job, you know, priority was always you, you or Susie, okay? Mm -hmm. I will always mm -hmm. push, push, push you, push, push, push Susie. Those were my priorities. Yeah, I was an agent, but my job was to get you guys working. And keep you working and making that money. Right. But right. whenever a new artist would call me, or even a, another artist would call me, and we become friends, and it, you would always say, "Hey, hey, this is a great show for this one." But this is a great show. Why don't you call this one? Why you? I'm like, hold up, man, hold up. My mic's out to pull you back. So hold up. Yeah. Let me get you your shit. Once I got you on, I got Susie on, I got you guys filled. Then I go and get everybody else on. But you right. used to do that all the time. It was very, very. I used to be talking to promoters and hear you here pitching another artist. I'm like, cool, that's beautiful. But we also have a job to do, <laughs> you know. Right. So right. But well, you know, sometimes you know? I just felt, I just felt that, you know, we want to keep this going, and those artists would do great in that area. No, no, no. I know, no, no. Your intentions were pure. I, I understand, that. and that's you know, mm -hmm. one of the things that you know always pulled me, uh, pulled me towards you. But now let me ask you now. So you started to realize the impact because, I mean, you dealt with, like, probably New York, you've dealt with all the major freaking DJs, man. Like, right. who right. haven't you messed with? Like, really? I mean, that that alone is, like, wow. Like, I've met most DJs. I've met them. Right. But right. not at the level of you. Every single one knows who you are and you've dealt with them. Or something. 
me, they'll be like, yeah, I think I remember him. You know, so it's the other way around. I don't have that impact with, with most of them. I, I know a handful where right. I know them where they see me. Hey, yo, what's up, um, But you have a totally different level relationship and an experience with these DJs, these iconic DJs. And you, so you've seen them when they started. You've caught a lot of them in the beginning. Right. You've caught, now I've seen, remember, I've been around a lot of them in the beginning. Right. But I right. didn't have that relationship with them. <clears throat> yeah. you saw them. Then you saw them grow into these iconic, you know, powerhouses, like this right. really, you know, remember, DJs were not looked upon. Back in those days, they really weren't. They were secondary. Right. right. You know what I mean? We, you know, they were played down a lot. I've seen it, you know, as far as uh, execs were concerned, DJs came a dime a dozen. I remember hearing people say that. Yeah. Now, I can, it's easy for me. I just got to get somebody else and I can hook them up and they just have to play this. And I, I got wow. the connection. I can put them, I can put uh -huh. them in this club. I can put, I can put yeah. them in that club. <clears throat> so I yeah. remember when they were, they were really, really seriously downplayed. And then I didn't realize how important they became or how, how much of a celebrity they became until I started booking some of them. Right. And I was and I was doing thirty thousand dollar for a freaking, you know, one hour set, you know, for an artist right. and you know, and for a DJ. And I was like right. I was like, oh, and they're all over the world playing. Right. And at that point mm -hmm. sure at are. that point at that point it started to really make sense to me. Mm -hmm. It started to really make sense. I said, Oh wow. This is like these these DJs are at like artist celebrity status. Right. You know, anything they play now, they have this incredible power right. behind them, you know, where mm -hmm. if a DJ came and took your record and ran with the record, they could they can really help your career. I mean, they I have two, two, I have two answers for that. Um, yeah. I knew how important DJs were very early because one of my mentors was a DJ who was right. Carlos de Jesus. And I okay. remember I was very young and people were like, oh, you know, you shouldn't be around him. You know, he's a womanizer, he's this, he's that. That man was like a big brother to me. I right, will right. always say he always looked out for me. He gave me great advice. He always steered me in the right direction. He didn't let right. nobody mess with me. You know what I'm saying? Right, yeah, yeah. And it didn't matter how much time would go between us speaking to each other. He would yeah. treat me like, his little sister, no matter what, right? you know? I mean, he was old enough yeah. to be my father. Right, right, But we yeah. were that close that it was more of like a sibling thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. another reason, um, <clears throat> that was just that I saw the importance of a DJ. I saw what he did in the, in the market. Right. But when I noticed how big DJs were getting was when we started performing out of the country. And I was okay. asked about DJs that produced on my album. And they would say, wow, we would love to have, like, we would love to have uh, David Cole and Robert Clavilla's DJ here. Uh, do you know them? Well, yeah, you know, because you work with, I said, no, do you have a relationship with them? Yeah, I absolutely do. Yeah, I can give you mm. that number. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And they would yeah. little Louie. You know, people would yeah. want, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, at that point, I don't think Andy was really known as a DJ because he, had, he, he turned into a producer very young. A lot of producers were DJs or they reverted but Andy back was to DJ, DJ. Now. Andy, And Andy yeah. was a good DJ. Andy has a great yeah. ear. To me, Andy yeah. always had a great ear. I think DJs a great make writer. the best. They make the best producers. DJs make the best right. producers. Right. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. But I knew how, that was when I knew, damn, they can be superstars. Because mm -hmm. out of the country, they were already, you know, they started that out of the country before they started in the United States. But that these DJs were superstars, you know? Right, right, I right. I saw that in the 80s, way back. Mm. I remember being in Amsterdam, and they thought, they in their mind thought that Robert and David were going to be with us because they did because of you. and You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. Like they yeah, thought yeah. they were going to be traveling with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, okay. I saw the importance of DJs at that point. But, you know, yeah. I also, like I said, I grew up around DJs. I saw their importance. They could break a record for you. Let me tell you something. Back in the day, you could break a record in the streets, you know? Oh, yeah. You could oh, seriously yeah. break a record in the streets. 
Mm-hmm. People mm-hmm. start playing yeah. it in the streets and people are into it in the streets. Your shit yeah. will play on the radio. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually it will play on the radio. That's why the stations started bringing in these mixed show DJs. Right, so right. Show, these, what, what the mixed show DJs had is they had the ability, like they were allowed to play what was playing in the streets. That was the concept. Later on, it became political where they started be gambling, they started governing even what they're playing on a mixed show. And that was stupid because they weren't getting it. It was becoming too corporate. Stations only wanted to play what was big because they wanted to sell ads. That was the main right. objective. They wanted to sell <laughs> right. ads. However, they lost the whole feel for the street because they were pulling these mixed show lost DJs. lost the whole feel for the street. And, right. And then they, they would do is then they would give them the list. Well, just play these songs. And then meanwhile, when the other songs were cracking, the, the PDs and the MDs will get involved and say, no, 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 don't play. We're not playing anything from that from that label. Oh, no, 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 no. Nothing from that order. And they were messing up at but that you know, point. You know what the but, DJs don't realize right now? You what? got these DJs. You got these DJs on, on yeah. online radio stations being able to play whatever they want to play. And you see them trying to get on Sirius, Sirius XM, trying to get on all these, you know, radio stations and everything. They don't know. They're in the best possible place they could be yes. in right now. Best, Being on best. online radio, they can get as many followers as they want on online radio and play what yeah. everybody wants to hear. You know, yeah, yeah. They need to yeah. concentrate. A lot of them need to concentrate on that. Listen, a lot That's of them the have made a decent it. living. I know a lot of them have made a decent living. You know, DJing, mobile DJing, but they a lot of them also lost that fire. They lost that fire. Right now, the, the, it's all about what's what they're getting, what they're gonna get, what they're getting for uh, a gig. But and I understand. But, I, but do you get, see now? They, do you see? Do you see how many older DJs are coming back? Oh yeah. And oh, wanting yeah. to DJ in clubs and stuff. That also goes for comedians. If you think about it, look at all yeah. these comedians: Eddie Murphy, um, um, yeah. Martin Lawrence. They all want to do some um, stand up now again. Right. Chappelle. Yeah. Like they're going back right. to their roots, just like the DJs are doing right now. Now these DJs want to go in clubs and they want right, to DJ. Right. They want to go yeah. on these online radio stations and DJ. Smartest yeah. thing they could possibly do. Yeah, you want to hear this message? Sure, go ahead. Okay, I wrote this song yesterday morning and I took it to the studio yesterday and it sounds pretty good, but you never know. So I'm just going to sing it right now, look. All right, I'm, I'm muting those. Guys, if you have demos, there's not the place for it. Um, uh, we don't have that much time, so I don't. I can't sit there and listen to two minutes worth of... Uh, of music, but uh, find us online. I'll be more than happy to listen to whatever it is that you have. Uh, but we can't, we're not going to use this format to uh, as a showcase. So sorry about that. But anyway, uh, <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> what was I gonna say? yeah, hey, hey, man, I'm not going to sit here and listen to, to shit, man. Because then what's going to happen is that they're going to put it on there and then I'm going to say something bad about it and then they're not going to like that. So, but I'd rather just mute it because they might have a, they're not going to like that. They, yeah, they might they might have a dope record <laughs> and I don't want to I don't want to miss out on the opportunity yeah. so yeah. have them send it to me, you know. Right. But, no, uh, so let me ask you something right now, right now, what do you think makes a good DJ right now? What, what's the quality of passionate, qualities passionate of a good... about what they do? If they're passionate about what they do, that's like right. the first step. Be passionate about what you do. Mm, okay. You know? So, so pass. Another good right. step. Stick to stick to what you know. Okay. So do you? you know? so, if you're a freestyle so, DJ, don't try and jump to hip hop because you think you're gonna make more money. Ah, uh, that's a good point. You know what I'm saying? That's a per. That's a real. I wish more people could could kind of key into that because what happens is people when you try to please everyone, you please no one. No that's one. <laughs> right. So you can't yeah. find yeah. the niche, find that that market, find that target, and go hard, man. Go hard right. on it. Absolutely. Pull up every stop. Mm-hmm. You know, if you if you're doing hip hop and you really think you have an opportunity or you enjoy it that much, then go for it. Go all you got. Right. If you love, if that's what you if enjoy. You love, if you love freestyle, don't knock off freestyle. Not do freestyle because either you think it's corny, you think it's dead, or or you're trying to be down. Nah, man, it, that's not the way. That's not the way to do it. Focus, mm-hmm. focus on the genre that you feel passionate about, what you really love. Right. Because what happens is, when you're passionate about someone, about something, you tend to work at it a lot harder for longer times, and it doesn't feel like work. Right. If you start 
working on something that you're not really into just because you think that's where you're supposed to be or that's what other people like, you're going to hate it. And it's going to come across in what you do. You're going to suck at right. it. Right. You know, if you feel that it's, 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 it's a, it's a struggle to DJ for three hours hip hop because you know, you're not really in tune with what's out there, but you could, you could DJ freestyle for six hours and feel like it was only an hour. That freestyle is, is your calling is where you need to go. And you need to double down on that and work hard and push forward. So yeah, that's a really good point. You know, what else do you think makes a good DJ? We're talking about like DJs in clubs. Like here's a here's a DJ wants to break in. Pay attention. To work at a Judge club. in a club. What the thing a DJ in a club has to do is pay attention to the patrons. See what moves right. them. Right. No, don't just play only what you like. Okay. Play what the patrons like too. Okay, and now now you know you'll get controversy with that, and I'll tell you why. So this is what DJs feel. DJs feel, and I can I can see both sides. This is there's like no right or wrong answer, but here's the opposite right. side of that. DJs feel that they're the pros. They're mm -hmm. gonna present to you what's hot out there. They're gonna break records that you never heard, and they're gonna introduce shit, and they're gonna they're gonna mix it in a way that's gonna pack the floor. So they don't want anyone to suggest if you hired them to DJ, then you need to trust them as a DJ. Okay, understandable. You that's know? fine. That's fine, absolutely. Right. That's fine. I, I will trust you as a DJ, but I'll tell you what, if you're out there playing what you want and the dance floor is empty because your ass is playing what you want, I can guarantee you, you're not going to be working there anymore. Right, and right. You can so play that's what you the, want in right. your damn house all you want. Yeah, right. And that's okay? the other side of it. Right. So that's yeah. the other side. So basically, you got to I'm not do paying a DJ. I'm not paying a DJ that's going to play what he likes and there's going to be yeah. nobody dancing or anything. Sorry. Right. Right, so and now look at look at the other side of the spectrum now. Now and now if you're doing somebody's freaking quinceanera, okay, and they want Tajano and they want Tajano and freestyle, and you're breaking up with some, you know, some hip hop, you know, some NBA or something, uh, you're gonna, you know, you're not doing that's not the time and the place. That's not where you go and sit down and say, okay, I'm gonna make these i I'm gonna give these people stuff that I like, that I know moves. That's not the place for it. Right. At that point, if you're working for someone and you're a work for hire and they commissioned you to to do their party, then yes, you got to do what they want. If they want you to play well, you know music. That's, but that's almost like being an artist. You might yeah. say, oh my God, I really want to perform this song. And the promoter says, listen, I don't want any of your new shit. I want your classic stuff. Right. You cannot perform that song just because you feel like it. Yeah. That's yeah. not what you're being paid for. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that's the way yeah. it works. Now, if you're not getting paid and you're doing yeah. it because you feel like doing it, play whatever you yeah. want. I don't care. Yeah. If you're yeah, getting paid I, and you're there to I've do a job, it. I've you know? seen it on both ends. I've had people call me and they say, hey, listen, you know, I have a party and, you know, I, I hired a DJ last year for this party and, you know, it was older people. They were like in their 70s and they're playing all this freaking hip hop stuff that they were cursing and, you know, they said that that was the hot, you know? And, and I could see, you know, you have to be smart enough as a DJ. DJs, first of all, got to be smart. If you're stupid, you need a new job. Because really, DJs got to be smart. You got to gotta what... please. They have to please everybody. Yeah, Not yeah, just you, please yourself. Yeah, then scientific. Stay, listen, then stay home and play what you like and you listen to it. All you yeah, like. Yeah, so you... All right, day. so if you want to... If you're going to work in a club, you have to have a mixture of the stuff that you know is packing the floor and have a clever way of introducing new material. If that's what you do, if you're trying to break, if you're trying to break right. records. Listen, you can't go listen, back to back with listen, new records. I perform, I perform freestyle, right? Right. When I'm home, I listen to all kinds of music. Um, right. Are you telling me, because I like this gospel song, I could go and sing it on stage now. Because I no. like this song, I could go and sing it on stage now. No, yeah, we can't do that. And me as an agent, right. you know, I, I, you know, I get that all the time. Latif, man, I want to I want to book this, this, and that, but please, I know they got new material. Tell them, please, we don't got much time. Just the just the hits, only the hits. Just the classics, yeah, just the, the classics. Yeah. They don't even say the classics. They want the hits. They don't okay, want yeah. if you have four albums, they don't want all your five. Albums. They want the hits. They want you gonna do four right. songs, give them the four hits. Don't give them right. don't give them some some song that you love. Oh, this song re reminds me of my my ex. You know, 
They yeah. want hip. They want the hip. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care for my ex. I don't know your ex. And I'm not paying your so, ex. So let's reverse it now. So, all right. So, well, we kind of, I was going to go in, you know, because we talk about what makes a good DJ. And then I said, what makes a bad DJ? I wanted to bring up what makes, what some of the things DJ should, but we kind of, we kind of blended those two together. Right. Well, right. we, we talked about, you know, where the DJs really, if you're working, if you're DJing for um, uh, like parties, like you're doing private parties, you need to mm -hmm. sit down with the people who are hiring you and you need to pull up their list. You got to find out. They yeah, need to try have a and make a list. playlist with them. Exactly. Yeah. Build a playlist with them. Don't go there and try yeah. to reinvent the wheel. They will love you and they will recommend you. You have to do that when you do private parties. Yeah. When you do stuff for a club, you have to really, you got to read the room. You got to read right. the room. You have to know who's in your room. You got to know, you got to talk to the promoter. Because some promo some club owners don't want certain things played. They don't right. want it. You know, yeah, it right. could be a hot Listen, hip hop. If I'm having record, a party, if I'm having a party and I hire the DJ, of course I'm going to say, listen, I want old school. I want old school hip hop, freestyle. Right. I want salsa. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I yep. want merengue. Like, I'm going to tell you what I yep. want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can't I'm go. Break it down. Yeah, you can't. You gotta be careful. Are there kids in the room? You know, are there older people? Some some beats, man. You do an 808 low bass beat. You can't have old people around that. You're gonna annoy the hell out of them. You cannot do that. You can't right. have that. The, 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 yeah, the, man, the, it has to be. Rap. Yeah, you but gotta most know. Old school, most old school is family friendly. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, you're gonna do a party. Stick no, but with I would absolutely yeah, no cursing. There's gonna be kids there. Yeah. There's gonna be old people there. Yeah. Real for, for, yeah, radio friendly stuff. Now, what about what about? Okay, so now, what about the DJs right now? Now, I know a ton of DJs. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember when a lot of these DJs first started. I remember when they they played a very important role. Right. And for some reason, somehow, some way, their role started to diminish it started to diminish a little bit not saying that it was still why not do you important. think it diminished think... why do you think it diminished uh hmm. i don't i don't know like, so meaning meaning so, meaning i don't think it diminished what makes you think it diminished no 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 well this is what this is what i get from a lot of the djs i get okay. as an agent i get i get djs uh -huh. that call me up and they say, yo, La, can you put me on your roster? Right. You know, I want to go, I want to go on the road. I want to DJ. So this is, this is the problem with that. Mm -hmm. Every single city has their own favorite DJ. Right. So, so it didn't diminish. It just means it's right. not something you could travel with. You got to do it in your own area. No, when I'm saying diminish, I'm saying the importance. Late record companies, uh, these new producers, new artists, I don't think that they're coming, they're going at the DJs. They're coming, you know, I don't think they're relying on the DJs the way they once were. You understand what I'm saying? Like well, back in yeah, the day, we I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Because these DJs need to take advantage, like I said, of these online radio stations. Right. They can get themselves quite a following if they oh, get yeah. a, a show online. Yeah. yeah. You know, even but if you they know Hey, DJ, even if they do DJ lives, you know, like they, they do lives right. and get a lot of followers. Yeah. They can get yeah, themselves you know to, you, get them to club DJ, club gigs all over. You know, I think about it now because, you know, we have a lot of radio lives. So and so talking to DJs, I'll tell you one thing I, I, I did realize. OK, so here's a couple things that I that pop up to me. OK, a lot of them, everything's a dollar. Everything's right. a dollar. They will right. not do shit for free. Okay, right. understandable. It's you got to pay your bills. You got to feed your family. That's understandable. Right. But that's going to be pretty much where you're going to be at. All right. So back in the days when all of these DJs. Yeah, were but you know when you can do that? You know when you can do that? When you can when, demand that and you still get paid. Right, right, right. So, no. Well, so but if you're you yeah, asking to get paid and you're not going to get any gigs, then you're dumb. Yeah. Right. But so this is what was happening. A lot of these DJs that were out there and they were doing all that and they were doing all the promos back in the days, they were doing it pretty young. They would get, but they never got to a point where they would make any real significant uh, money. A lot of these freestyle DJs are making maybe $300 for the night, 500. Very once in a while, you'll get those that are making above 500 to a G. 
mm-hmm. I don't know any in the freestyle that are doing just freestyle that are making over that. I'm not, I don't have any. I know because I've worked with some of the top DJs in freestyle and I've booked their shows. And right. put it this way, sometimes their money is so in- insignificant that I don't even take a commission because I feel bad. Right. Okay? As a matter of fact, I don't remember the last time I took a commission from a DJ set. So I basically worked for free for that DJ because I didn't think, I felt bad about, you know, taking them their 10%. Taking, I felt that right. like the 10% would hurt them. Right. Okay. But you know, at this point, at this point, a lot of these DJs either haven't done it in a while, mm-hmm. um, they see that it's not, money-wise, it's not significant right now. What they right. need to do right now is get their followings. Right. And think about when they first started. They would have DJed for fucking free just to get right. there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Think about yeah. back then what you did to get your career going. Sometimes you got to yep. go back to square one yep. to yep. get your career going again. We did it. Yep. Do you remember? Do you remember when you said, I'm going to have to take you out of the market for a minute? Yeah. Mm-hmm. When we went through that whole situation, when that old manager said, that he was going to ruin yeah. me and yeah. I was never mm-hmm. going to work again. And you said, okay, we're going to have to pull you back and we're going to have to start all over. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember. And you said, are you willing to start all over? Like you're a new artist. And I said, absolutely. I was willing to yeah. do it because it was that important to me. Yeah. yeah. Is it that important to those DJs? Yeah, that's the thing. And yeah. you know, they think it's forever. They're like, oh man, so what am I going to have to do for a whole year? Act like a new you know, <coughs> DJ? You know yeah, what? Yeah. Time flies. And that time but, is going to fly anyway. The thing is that the opportunities and the technology can like put, you know, could time warp their freaking process. Like the stuff that took them 10 years to develop to where they're at now, they can mm-hmm. actually repeat that in less than a year. But right. That's what I'm it. saying. That's yeah. what I'm is saying. That, is that Start a lot of from the beginning. Start Listen. your shit all over again. A lot of them lost the fire. They lost the fire. Again, you know, listen, I, again, I pay bills. I like to make money. I'm picky on what I, I charge for, what I don't charge for. I understand. So I don't I don't like to mess with anybody's money. I don't like to talk people out of not taking money. But sometimes if you really, really, you have to build, you have to build yourself. And sometimes the right. only way to build yourself is by putting yourself in situations that allows you to build yourself. If your hands, grow. put it this way. Yeah. Listen, I know tons of DJs, tons of DJs. Okay, if I want to do a party, now I pay for my DJs. Whenever I've done parties, we pay for the, our DJs. Now, but if I want to pay for, if I want to pay for a DJ, a DJ comes, I think their price is outrageous. You know what? I could go somebody else. Right. Very easy for me to go to somebody else. DJs mm-hmm. have to work themselves to a point where they have the value. If they're asking right. for this amount, that value has to be there. They right. have to, they have to, they have to get that passion. And you know what? A lot of them in their 50s, they're like, man, I did this for 30 years. I really don't have well, it doesn't have to take you 30 years. You took 30 years learning. You already know this not shit. Not only now. that, not only that, a lot of them can talk all the shit they want. Oh, I did this for 30 years, but they never really put anything into their career. No, man. They bought just cool equipment. Sitting, I mean, just sitting around um, doesn't mean that you put you put into your career. I know I've yeah. put into my career. I know yeah. that I've had to start over again, and I've done it. Listen, I you know, know how long? And I've seen <laughs> I've seen artists that have one song, yeah, at one point make more money than me because oh, I was yeah. starting all over. Yeah, yeah, and I would have to open up for them. On, on shows. Did I have a problem with that? No. You want to know why? I don't have, no. I don't have a problem where, I, where I'm at on the lineup because yeah. I know I'm going to give a quality show. Right, right, right. You know? But yeah. knowing knowing that these were people that didn't even listen. Some of them had records that never charted, nothing, nothing, nothing. And they right. were being treated better than me. Yeah. But I knew sometimes you have to do what you have to do. Now... Right. I get paid more than a lot of the artists. Right, right, right. And I yeah. get treated better than a lot of the artists because right. I give a quality show. Um, I I go the extra mile. 
I sign autographs. Mm-hmm. I bring pictures. Like I, I, you know, I have no problem doing. Um, um, right. They ask me to do a video for the show. I do it. You know. Well, well, I've told you this in the beginning. I've told like everybody I've speak to is you have to give more than what you're getting paid. You have you right. have to you have to over deliver. You have to over. Yeah. No, no, it's called over deliver. Meaning, if someone pays you five hundred to do something. That doesn't mean you go and do a five hundred dollar show. You right. go in and you give a fifteen hundred dollar show. You over deliver. That way, they never right. ever question that five hundred dollars ever. And if you right. ever had to go up in price, or there's you get two people coming to you for the same date, then you can go and you could kind of play with the with the price at that point. You know, so yeah. you have to, you know, I tell people this, but you know, I, again, I'm going to, let's go back to the freestyle. I will freestyle art, uh, pr- uh, DJs. Most of them are pretty much forties to fifties. A lot mm-hmm. of them, they, you know, pretty old for, for as DJs. This, I'm just saying compared to when they started, where they started as teenagers, they lost the, the energy. They lost the passion. They lost the hope that anything good will ever come from this. What I want people to realize, I want these DJs to realize is that freestyle music has a ton of opportunities for the right people, for right. the right DJs who are willing to like take a deep breath. Don't think about oh, I'm 40, oh, I'm 50. No, no, no. Just take that that you did. You've done 30 years of fucking schooling. Now right. you're going to take it at this age and now you're going to execute all this experience you have now people ask me yo lie like i was saying before yo man let me get on your roster i've had like tim spinney show i've had different people on my roster bigger djs and and i've tried to promote them around the country and this was way this was way back and it was hard like djs if i went to if i took tim who's in chicago and wouldn't push him in in california a lot of times the promoters there will be like well, you know, I got my DJ who's part of the station and he has a following out here. Oh, right. makes sense. Well, that's why sense. I said they need to get themselves online shows where they can get followers all over from every state. Right. Well, you know you what understand? they need to do? Right. What they need to do is they need to come up and these DJs need to become, they need to start treating what they do, not as a DJ, but like an artist. They need right. to get you, they need to become unique. And listen, I could take 10 DJs right now, line them up, and nobody stands out. They're all pretty much the same. I'm not dogging them, but they're all pretty much the same. It's a Do guy or a girl yeah. DJing or spinning on some t- tables or using Serato with the headphones on. They all look the same. They, all you have to do is go for And they're all good. They're all good. Like, really. You know who stands <laughs> out? You know who stands out? Who? Livia. Livia. Look at that. Yep. A she novelty artist. Up. She's a little right. girl. A, she has the hip hop clothes on. Right, right. You know, right. like this thing. She has, right. you know, right. that right. you have to, you have to like, make, yeah, right. I'm sorry, go ahead. Her go novel, ahead. Her, age, her age makes it right. No, no, you're right. Her age, and she's a good example. Her age makes her a novelty act, but she also has the skills to come behind it. Right. She also has the skills. And that's right. the way she dresses. Which right. is incredible. She's right. So she she walks the walk. And guys, that's a she's a great example. And you say, oh well, she's a little girl. Anybody's gonna hire her? Uh, not really. Not, not really. really. I know I'm not gonna hire does. her. If she can't play. Yeah, if they can't play, they can't. But she's good at what she does. But remember, she's not gonna be a little that's... girl forever. She's not gonna be a right. little girl forever. She's gonna grow. Right. So it's up to her and her team. I know her father. That's my boy, Henry. Uh-huh. I know her father. We we cool and and. They're a good team. And I remember talking to him years ago and I told him, I said, whatever you do, never give up management. Never give up management. You've managed your daughter. Because I know this experience because I worked with little Susie. And he right. has. And I think he's done an incredible job. You know? But I mean, no, when he came to I'm me about... I'm tell you something. I know a lot of these DJs personally. Right. And I think that they're a lot more fascinating than they let on. Do you understand? Yeah. Yep. Yep. And if they let that out and let the fans get to know them, right? That would be a big plus in their career. And if they're right. eccentric, listen. If you had some, if you're eccentric in the way you dress and the way you act, let that out. Let these people know about you. Right, right. That's how you start getting followers. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Excuse me, I had to. Uh, I had to switch this microphone. <laughs> Um, 
Yeah, no, absolutely. So, you know, using Libya as an example, though. Okay, so guys, all right, let me get, let me get, let's go straight to the point. If you're a She's DJ, different. Right. Think about your image. What do you look like when you're on stage? Right. What do you look like? Do you look yeah. like the guy next to you? Is what can you do to make yourself stand out? Right. Do you know that people will hire you as a DJ because you bring, you bring a character or something to the, to the table? Right. Okay. Look at that dude. Um, what's his name? The one from um the Jersey House, Jersey Shore. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, the hair. man, it's it's not a big secret. It's not a big secret. He sucks. I've heard him DJ. He sucks. Right. But I mean, I've heard money, that. I haven't heard him DJ, his but I money, heard that. his money is off the roof. Guys, do the research. I don't want. I don't want to talk about people's money, but but hey, off the freaking charts. Okay. Why? Okay, yeah, sure, he has the show. But if you look at the dude, he has an interesting look to him. Yeah, how do you and get on the show? Helps. Because he has an interesting look. Yeah, I think interesting about him, you know? Yeah. And, right. and you know, if you're not the best looking guy or whatever the case, or girl, remember, this goes to girls. There's a lot of girl DJs out there. I think the girls, believe it or not, have the upper hand. A lot of the girls can, you know, you get creative. I don't want you right. guys going up. I'm not saying go up there topless and do, I, I'm not into all of that. But unless you know you're saying, rich, you know, boy. Unless of, you're a dude. Unless you're a dude that likes doing it without a shirt on. I say do it. Right, right. No, but right. That's but what, what I'm say. saying is like, girls are already an oddity when it comes to DJ. Even though there's a lot of them, they still don't surpass the amount of boy DJs there are. So a right, girl by right. themselves, just alone, is already an interesting. I, I guarantee you, if there's four DJs there, and one of them is a girl, and somebody has to pick from the four that girl's gonna be at least considered they just want to see how she plays and if she can rock the house right. she's gonna get that job because she's different right. but if you guys are djs if you're djs think image think like an artist man fucking right. shave your head throw some freaking throw a sequin shirt on man you know some light up glasses make i know it sounds clownish make your you hair a crazy color who cares about you spinning records? Entertain the crowd. Become that right. extra artist. If Angel's right. performing and she's doing a show at your event, well, why can't you be an artist also when in between sets, you know, you're, you're doing your thing and you're interesting, not just to hear, but to stare at. You ever see a DJ who's rocking the house so, so dope that the audience stands there and watches them? I absolutely have. That's so, yeah. That's when you know you're dope. You know who was different like you know that? You're... You know who was different oh. like that? Oh. David Cole. Because uh-huh. he would actually play his keyboards like a mix in between with the records. That's dope. Yeah, people do that, but I think he was That's one of the dope, innovators of that. Right? And yeah. that was different. Yeah. And that was different. Yeah. So anything yeah. like that yeah. that you can do. Yeah, yeah. You want to hear this message? Yeah, sure. I'm going to have to agree um, with you guys, with everything you guys are saying. I also want to know what is you guys' um, view on Paris Hilton? Because recently she just came out talking about that she's a DJ. And I've yeah. never yeah. even heard of her being a DJ. <laughs> I've never heard her yeah. DJ or do a damn thing. Except for be Paris Hilton, you know. But... Um, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so like I, I agree, she does have a look or what have you, but I, I also heard that she never even used, she doesn't use her own voice neither while she's DJing. I don't know how that works, but I just wanted okay. to know you guys' opinion. You know, I actually have heard of her DJing. I yeah. have yeah. heard of her doing some celebrity things, and the way she doesn't use her voice is she, used pre, she uses pre recorded um, shows. Whereas the whole DJ track is pre-recorded. So that's why it's yeah. not her voice on it. Yeah. Yeah, well, she's so been basically DJing. basically just having Paris Hilton there because of yeah. her personality, yeah. you know? Right, 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 yep. So I have. Now, do I think she would be good? Uh, I think she would work in Vegas, where I know she's worked before. I don't know too much about some of the bigger clubs in other places. You know, like New York, it might be, a, you know... I don't know if New York would be down for that, for Paris Hilton. Um, yeah, well, I, yeah, I, well, I've known of Paris uh, performing for quite a while because she was pitched to me. 
as an agent. So people, I've had people come to me and ask me if I wanted to book a very expensive. She was something like I think a hundred grand to 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 DJ back then. I don't know where she's at right now, um, mm -hmm. but think about it. it. Makes sense, okay? A lot of times back in the days, what people used to do is. Um, a lot of times they would hire people just to do what they call walkthroughs. So if a DJ, let's say an artist charges a hundred thousand, right? You can also hire that artist to do what they call a walkthrough for like a half the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So for like 50% of that. So for 50 grand, you can have an artist just what they'll do is they'll come in, they'll spend a couple of minutes, they'll have a drink, say hi, bye, and they leave and they get that 50 grand the half of the money that they would get as a performance. So what they did is they like, well, instead of having Paris just walk through, because think about what did Paris do? She was a socialite. She would come in and sit down and drink and act silly. So Paris was like, you know what? I don't want to sit and just hang out and act silly. Let me get behind the turntables and give me that money. So now, not only does she have to pay, she could charge for that walk through. She can actually charge now as an artist. She could get that other half. Because now she's performing, she has something to do. It looks good for the event. You know, the event looks classy yeah. at this point. I, I don't even think I don't even think she did more than an hour. No, they usually don't. They usually do forty-five yeah. minutes. Yeah, you know, maybe an hour. That's very rare that they'll do that. But yeah, there's right. a quite a so few. So they have a they have they have DJs that they use for the rest of the night, and she basically does like a half an hour behind the turntables. Yeah. Yeah, I had a whole list of other celebrities. I don't have it handy, but there's actually guys, there's actors, and there's other people that also uh, DJ that you can you can hire them to come in. But yeah, it's just yeah. it's just she's the look. basically she's basically the cute girl that hung out with the DJ in the DJ booth, but she's getting paid. Yeah, that's basically yeah, yeah. But, but and and right now, especially now with Serato, right? So Serato, you can actually put an entire mix, right? So she could do an entire mix and put them on her computer. Okay, and all she has to do really is like dance around, kind of look cute, like she's doing something, kind of hold the fader, go up and down with the fader, make it look like she's doing something, then maybe hit a button and switch it over where it, that shit switches over by itself anyway. And, you know, so she can make it look good. It's just entertainment. She's not really a DJ. The DJ community itself will never respect her, but she doesn't care. She's getting paid. And you know what? If I can afford her and I was doing a dope ass party, I hire her. <laughs> but that was a great question thank you for that yeah. question that was a great question yeah yeah thank you so much but uh but yeah so you know but you know you know again that, and that's a great example for these djs our freestyle djs guys we if you're freestyle djs we have a special interest in you you know if you want to talk one-on-one -on -one with me i have experience because i've been around for a long time so as angel um We've we've all over the country, so you can't tell. Well, you know, I'm in Chicago is different, though. You can't tell me that shit. I've been there, and I'll be there again in a right. couple weeks. You can't say, "Oh, I'm from California. I'm from Hawaii. Or I'm from Puerto Rico." Uh, we've been there. We've done it. We've done it. You know, I'm from Canada. We've been it. We know. We know. We know what you guys do. We know what's out there. We know what's happening. So you can't tell right. us that. But if you listen, if you humble yourself, and you listen. You're breaking up. And you forget about the age shit. And I'm your age. Am I breaking up a lot? Yeah. Now you're good. Go ahead. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. But anyway, if, if, you know, if they, if they, um, if they humble themselves and they give us a call and they forget to put the age shit to the side, put the age shit to the side and act like your last 30 years that you've been DJing was school, you was in college. Now come and take that. You already got the skills as a DJ. Now you need the marketing side. You need the other side. You need that star thing. Trust me, your career is far from over. You guys can catapult and you can really, really run with this. Uh, I'm telling you, I do this shit for a living for many years. There is an extreme opportunity. And you know what? 99% of the people are not going to go for it. They're not going to listen to them as corny. Yeah, but let me tell you something. That, money, that shit is not corny when you're walking out of, freaking, out of that room with 100 grand in your pocket. You know, Absolutely. Free, no, that's right. Freestyle. <laughs> don't, sleep, don't sleep on freestyle. If I didn't think freestyle had any legs, we would not be doing remember, remember, me and Angel, this is all we do, people. Okay? We don't have other jobs. Okay? This is all we do. And we're telling you, we're here telling you, you know, it's relevant. There's still a lot going on, and there's a ton, a ton of opportunities. Let me listen to these messages. 
Um, I have another question. Um, now, when you say freestyle artist, I mean freestyle artist. When you say freestyle DJ, do you mean a DJ that freestyles during their set, or do you mean a DJ freestyle DJ? Like, what do you mean <laughs> by freestyle okay. DJ? Like, or do you mean like they just spin without having an exact set? Set like they vibe off of the audience. Hey, hey, Carrie. Hey, let me let me answer that question for you, okay? And that's good that you asked. And the reason why we're doing this podcast on stereo is we're part of a genre of music that originated in the '80s called freestyle music. It was a Latin based. It was almost like what what hip hop did with the urban youth. Uh, we did with the Latino urban youth. So a lot of the kids that came out of the Bronx, New York, and the other five boroughs, and then of course it went into other areas. So it's mostly, um, it's all the music is English, but you'll hear that hip hop influence in the background, a little bit of that Latin shit on it. Um, it's a huge, huge genre. You can Google uh, acts like the Cover Girls, Stevie B, Lisa Lisa. Um, anyway, you can Google stop. acts like that. Yeah, Brendan K. So you could you could YouTube them. Um, people have been on major record companies, major ra- ra- uh, labels, um, Billboard charts, Apollo, uh, Soul Train. I mean, it's very very American relevant Bands, music. Yeah. yeah, American Bands. It's and it's still going really strong today. Um, but it kind of got a little stagnant. Like we're not kind of tipping it to the top. And and Angel is the lead singer of the group, The Cover Girls. I'm a manager agent. We've both been doing this over 30 years. Um, we're very active in the market and what we're always trying to do is we're always trying to blow some new life into it let people know that this thing is still here and it's still very relevant to anyone who's into the music business in general um uh and and you just could never break in sometimes you might want to do your research and see what's happening on this side because people are working um and that's what that that's what that is so you know take a look at it a lot and, of and, and, and the reason and the reason we're on stereo app is because this is new to this genre, and we're trying to bring this genre onto stereo app as well. Right, right. Yeah, freestyle, a lot of freestyle on Facebook and on Instagram. So there's a lot of noise, and the stuff that we say, a lot of times people can't grab on because they're hearing other shit. And, uh, but when they come on stereo, it's really right now, it's just us. We don't want it to stay just us, but right now it's just us. And we're trying to use this this platform to educate people and have people go on and start to Google and start to YouTube the acts that I just mentioned, the Stevie B, the Cover Girls, the Lisa Lisa. Check out that. And then when you look on the side, you'll see, you know, other acts. Um, and then you can just follow and just you, you you're gonna you're gonna definitely hear music that you grow up. You be like, oh shit, I know this song. I know, oh my god, that's my jam. You're gonna do that. That's freestyle. I'd music. love to hear you come back, Kerry, and let us know what you think about this music. Yeah, we're on here every day from noon to one o'clock. Let's hear the other message. Hello, I hope you're doing great. I don't even know what you're talking about, so I have to apologize first for being impolite. But since I saw that you are like freestyle DJ, and considering that I'm new to stereo, I just want to ask a question. Um, have you guys ever tried? Um, connecting yourselves to like uh, your phone say to to a mixing console or uh, an audio interface to go live on stereo or is it even is it even possible um not not with um yeah not if you're doing video and i think there's rules um that they have about double streaming so like if you're going on stereo this is the extent of stereo um but if you're also streaming let's say on another phone with facebook and stereo finds out i believe that there's some some problems on that but what i would do if you want to get some more information on there scroll through stereo there's a lot of people giving uh um uh, discussions about the stereo app and the rules and how to use it i go on there all the time when i want to learn we're, we're still new to it but um Go on it. There's a lot, and because there are a lot of rules, um, and they'll answer your questions. They'll be better suited at, at, at answering your question. But we we appreciate you uh, tuning in, though. So, up. like a freestyle DJ, what could it could be sister of? Well, like fun fact is, you know, the largest water balloon fight actually had eight thousand one hundred and fifty-seven participants. 
and also 175,141 water balloons. Now, I don't know if the water was in the balloon, but that's up to speculation, you know. So, another one for you I have is the largest stre streamer stri string. Okay, we're not going to say that one. Hell no. Okay, largest laser tag survival match was 307 people. Okay. And then, you know, moving on. Bug snorkeling. How did All I right. know you was going to play that? How did I know you were going to play that whole message? <laughs> it was, it was. It was a little fast. Let me tell you game, something. I, I felt like I, I felt like I just took some psychedelics, and I was <laughs> listening to somebody talk. Am I right? All right, guys. Hey, man. Listen, you guys, you guys play those. You guys don't leave those all funny messages. I might listen to a second of it or though, but then after <laughs> a while, I, think I, I will mute it off. So, but anyway, look like keep them coming. I'm cool. Uh, you know, we have a mute button. You can keep sending them, and we'll be good with that. But, uh, um, but anyway, um, yeah. So we're pretty much at the end. Any um, any last words regarding this topic? I love this topic. I think this is a really powerful topic. I'd love to and hear I'm from some DJs and hear what they think about the topic, and see yeah, if they think yeah. what we're saying is something they might be interested in. Yeah, yeah. So if you go onto our, our Facebook page too, we uh, we advertise our stereo show. Um, you can leave comments on there as well. So unless, uh, uh, but we, you know, all these topics, we will come back around with these topics later on. In the, in yeah, the we'd love to hear you. Yeah, we'd love to um, have you here on Stereo App with us. So please follow yeah, us on Stereo notes. App. Make a profile. Yeah, follow us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Please follow us. Um, and, and you know, um, and uh, uh, final note on this: don't don't sleep on the freestyle DJs. The, the opportunity. Stop. The, the one or two people out of the thousands who listen to us and who do what we're trying to tell you to do, you're going to win. You're going to win and everybody's going to look at you and say, what the hell did you do? And mm -hmm. and if you have, if you need some one-on-ones with me, anything we speak about is confidential, please get in touch with me. I'm very easy to find. I'm everywhere. Um, just reach out, say, hey, I heard I heard the show. Um, I want to talk to you about this. What you know, And I'll clarify whatever I can. Um, and then at that point, I'm going to look at you and see what you do from that point on, you know. So, but anyway, guys, we're going to call it quits. We're done for the day. Anything to say, babe? Bye. Be cool, everyone. Don't forget to check us out tomorrow. Peace out. <laughs>